Hi, everybody. Hello there. Jerry. Linda and Gizmo. He's on a chair today. He's down low. Here he is. We're the Village's Newcomers, and today it's time for... Send us your questions. We've got your answers. Jerry and Linda's Mailbag That's right. It's Mailbag Monday. Monday. That was the only submission that we got for an intro music, and luckily it's a winner. So thank you, Wally Segita. We really appreciate that. And now for our weekly shout out. We want to thank today our friends in Dublin, Ireland. This is from Michelle and Dave. We got a postcard all about Dublin and this fantastic calendar, which I really needed because I was duplicating uh, pages off the computer to put on my refrigerator. But now I have a real calendar and beautiful, beautiful landscapes of Dublin. Thank you, Michelle and Dave. It's on our list. Yeah, we, we, like we to want to go. go so bad. Another and remarkable gift we got this week was a king cake. I bet y'all don't know what a king cake is, do you? Well, the only reason I know is because we got one yesterday. <laughs> yeah. Came from a city that I like to pronounce, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I think I have a little Cajun in me. <laughs> You but need it's, to be caged. <laughs> thank you, Sharon and Mike, for that king cake. I ate a hunk about, yeah. about that big last night, and she ate some too. Delicious. Thank you so much. Sylvia says, Can you provide me with a rough figure, the percentage or ratio of snowbirds versus 12-month residents who are homeowners in the villages? That's a tough one. I tried for two days to get some sort of official answer, and I couldn't get it. Um, so whatever we give you, what answer, take it with a grain of salt because it's only a best guess. It's the best guess of two or three people I've talked with put together, but you know, take that for what it's worth. There are two different factors to think about in your question. Designer homes. That's really just a fancy word for the average home here in the villages. Most of the homes, like all of the homes in our neighborhood, are called designer homes. And your villa homes. And I think you'll find more snowbirds in the villa homes than you will in the designer homes. We do have several friends that are snowbirds. Mm -hmm. I would say on our estimation, it's 65% 12-month residents. 30 or 40% snowbirds. But again, unofficial. And like we've told you guys before, snowbirds is just a term for people that live basically half the year up north and half the year in Florida. What we're finding more and more now are people that live three or four months up north and eight or nine months here in Florida. The reverse snowbirds. And that's happening a lot. Um... The, the Villages is going strong. I talked to uh, someone in the know a couple of days ago, and in January, there were 319 pre-owned homes sold. And in the same month, 260-some brand new homes were sold. So a lot of action down here. Uh, people still flocking to the Villages. But this is a tough year. It is. This is the COVID year. And for example, some people in Canada haven't made it back. Some people that we know, great people over in England, Great Britain, UK, they haven't made it back. But I think in a designer neighborhood, you're going to have a higher percentage of full-time residents than you would in the villa neighborhoods. Jim and Stephanie kind of piggyback on that a little bit. They said they have experienced from time to time discrimination of being a renter. They rent for four months at a time and are not a resident. And they're having a hard time understanding why they have to wait to see if classes are full before they get to take part. Uh, they are having trouble with paying a full annual fee for some clubs or classes when they're only here four months. And they don't like the fact that the sports pools don't allow guests. Uh, things of that nature, they feel like are discriminatory 
to the people that rent here, even if it's a, an extended rental. Yes. Uh, I had that uh, uh, situation with a guest when I brought our daughter-in-law to the sports pool. I was so excited for her to do the aerobics water sports, and we were turned away, or she was, and she said I could go in, and I didn't feel like going in and saying goodbye to my daughter-in-law. So I felt really... It, I felt pretty sad for her, and uh, that's unfortunate, but I guess the people that are residents, they cater, I guess, to the residents that live here full-time first. One <laughs> thing that puzzles me about that question, some of the people that do rent their homes here allow the residents or the renters mm -hmm. to get a permanent guest pass, right. which they have to go pay $50 for which I thought would allow them to do everything just as if they were a resident. Yeah, I was under so that too. Understand. Maybe Jim and Stephanie aren't buying that $50 pass that allows them to have the privileges of a resident. We'll see if we can find out more on that mm -hmm. and uh, bring it to you later. By the way, you might notice I'm not my usual vibrant, pure-skinned, Beauty man. <laughs> I've always had had issues with the sun. And I uh, went to the dermatologist again this week. And I must have had 50 places frozen on my face. So there's nothing really wrong. But uh, I'm sure that I'm, I'm looking a little bit different. So uh, that's what's up with me. Here's one from Mike. Mike is 65 years old. And he's from up north. And he wants to know, and he's worried about it because he wants to come here, but he's worried about the negative comments from residents regarding people from up north, particularly New Yorkers. Oh, no. People saying derogatory comments. Um, I, I'm glad that you wrote that in because that's one thing that has really opened my eyes during our time doing this channel is that people write in with insults and they are insulting a whole group of people saying they are rude, they are obnoxious, they are this or they are that. I hate that. Mm -hmm. I would have done the same thing 20 years ago. As I've gotten older and seasoned, that's the word for it, isn't it? <laughs> I realize you can't judge any group of anything by the actions of one person. I'm going to give you a, a personal example. I played golf last year before COVID with a lady. And I always try to be helpful when I'm playing. If you know that when you're golfing and you don't hit the green with your shot, you may take two clubs up. So you lay one club down next to the green and you go up and use your putter. And then when you leave the green, you pick up your other club and go. Well, this lady was was uh, probably 10 or 15 years older than me. And she was in our group. And I would bend over and pick up her club off the ground and give it to her so she didn't have to get it. She gave me a, a huge tongue lashing oh, keep my, to, to keep oh. my hands off of her club. <laughs> and this, of course, was after all day when she had been explaining New York this and New York that. So my first inclination was, wow, what a bully, what a rude person. But that's only one person. We've got great friends from New York. You know, we're not going to see us watch another YouTube video and write in and tell them that they are this or they are that, because that would be judging a whole group by the actions of one. And we just don't do that. So every once in a while on the Next Door app or the Talk of the Villages app, you're going to see people blasting somebody with bad behavior that happens to be from a certain area. I don't personally think you have to tell what area someone's from when they misbehave. Right. Because people misbehave. Yeah, from every area. <laughs> even Indiana oh, sure. has some misbehavior. Yeah. You know, Florida, Texas. There are tons Everywhere. of Wisconsinites here and, <laughs> and Michiganders and, and uh, people misbehave from everywhere. But people, and we've noticed it from Boston, New York, that's a go, go, go town, both of them. Yeah. And, you know, driving, for example, you have to be aggressive or you don't get anywhere. And yeah. probably the same way in their daily lives sometimes. So they may have a strong personality. That's not necessarily a negative thing. But but don't get the impression from reading 
next door or talk of the villages that we hate New Yorkers. No. But it's very common to see comments like that. And uh, we're, we're going to try to avoid using words like they when mm-hmm. we're talking about right. people and situations. Julie says her and her husband Dave like to work out and they want to know if there are gyms here in the villages. They want to know how to find out those fitness, where those fitness centers are. So again, I didn't know. I had to do some calling. So I found out. Here's the list. There are workout facilities at Fenny, at Rohan, at Seabreeze, at Mulberry Grove, and at Colony Cottage. Those are not free. You have to pay a fee to go in and use those rooms. So I wanted to also find out how much that fee was. And it was a little more than I thought. Uh Uh-oh. Back when we were looking into the villages, I assumed that like the Del Webb community or so many of the other uh, 55 plus, that they had a central room. Mm -hmm. Welcome, retirees. Keep yourself in shape. Right. That's not the case here. There are some outdoor stations with workout equipment that you can go to, but inside you have to pay a fee. Here it is. I've got a list. A very nice lady at one of the fitness centers read me the numbers, and I wrote them down. So they're pretty close. I may have made a mistake here or there, but uh, you'll get the idea. A single membership to the fitness clubs is $44.39 per month. If you get it for three months, it's $119. Now, those fitness centers are open from 6.30 in the morning until 8, Monday through Friday, and 7 in the morning until 5 on Saturday and Sunday. They do offer other memberships, um, a couple, two people in a household for three months would be $200. Uh, A single for six months would be $210. A couple for six months, $411. And you can buy an annual membership if you like. It's $363.49 for a single or $710.28 for a couple. So there it is. You have fitness centers available. Um, I kind of thought they'd be free. I did too. We turned 65, as you know. Hard to believe. Uh <laughs> You know, I've always said, I'm going to do a show on feeling young sometime. But you're you're only as old as you feel. And, and we feel young and we try to keep going young. And right now we're healthy, so we're able to do it. But by turning 65 and getting on traditional Medicare with a supplement, uh, it enables us to have a free membership at the uh, the big fitness center downtown, MVP. So that's how uh, how we get around it. And, you know, this does not happen by accident, ladies and gentlemen. You have to work. <laughs> I am so out of shape right now. But it, uh, Me too. I'm, wor- I'm going to work on it. Here's a question from one of our favorite viewers, mm-hmm. Jose Wittenheimer. Yay. He says, Mr. and Mrs. Sunshine, I swam a couple of times at a Central Florida YMCA. It was salt water. I loved it for these worn down arthritic knees. Are the pools at the villages salt water? I'm going to leave that to our resident pool expert here. They are all salt water pools. That's that's good to hear, huh? <laughs> there you've heard it, ladies and gentlemen. No need to do any more research. <laughs> <sighs> You're in luck, uh, Jose. Lots of salt water down here for you. Somebody got tickled there. That's getting tears in my ears. <laughs> <laughs> that reminds me of that old song. I've got tears in my ears from laying on my back in my bed while I cry over you. You ever heard that? Sing it. Yes. <laughs> Here's another question. This is from Chris Brown. That sounds like a famous name. James. I'll also leave this one for her. You spoke of pickleball, but you haven't mentioned shuffleboard. Are there ample shuffleboard courts in the villages? There are. There are many shuffle, shuffleboard courts. Can't say it. But um, uh, we see them almost every rec center has them. Almost? And all the rec centers have them. Yes. 
but we do not know how to play it yet. We're going to take lessons someday, I think. The only thing I'm, I'm upset about is that they have roofs over them, but the bocce courts don't. <laughs> That's something, uh, you know, if any village's management is watching this, yeah. the shuffleboard courts have lovely little shelter house over yeah. them. So if it's really sunny, you're fine. If it's raining, you're fine. But the bocce courts, no. We play <laughs> bocce. We love bocce. Yeah. This is, uh, I'm, I've got, I'm going to get a shirt that says bocce boss. <laughs> oh, Yeah. We tried to bring an umbrella and put it in a, ch a chair or whatever behind the bench, and that didn't work. It, it gets hot there. Over. It does get hot. Yeah. But, yeah, they have shuffleboard yeah. courts at every rec center. And the big rec centers, I'm thinking Manatee, Burnsed, Captiva, Bradenton, mm -hmm. Rohan, Everglades. Deluxe. And they may have, they've got a whole bunch of them. I don't know how many. Eight? Yeah. yeah. Eight maybe? So plenty of shuffleboard courts. We don't know how to play. We want to learn to play. Mm -hmm. Looks like fun. Yeah. It's a very low impact sport like bocce. You know, you can play it even, uh, you know, if you're past your prime, if you hurt a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Play it for a long time. Joy and Chuck write in. And they're interested to know about golf reservations. Most of you know, or some of you know, that there is a tee time system here. You can make reservations by the phone very awkward. It's hard to do in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Or you can subscribe to the villages.net and make your tea times over the, the uh, computer, over the internet. And they want to know, do we have to play in a foursome? I hate other people watching me trying to hit the ball. I did the same thing when I was here the first month or two or, or when I learned. I just wanted to play with him at the very end of the day, about 4 o'clock, 4.35 whatever and didn't want anybody behind me or anybody with me um yeah that's a problem you'll get over it i think but yeah that is the best thing you wait until the end of the day yeah. take the last tea time then you won't necessarily have tea times behind you mm -hmm. you can play uh, slower right and the later it gets the fewer people want to play because they're afraid that they can't get nine holes in if you're a beginner sure. why do you care it's free golf on the executives if you live here Play five holes, play six holes, play uh -huh. three holes uh -huh. with no pressure. That's the way to do it. But I didn't properly address that question, I don't think. The question basically was, do we have to play in a foursome? The short answer is yes, because mm -hmm. tea times are in such demand, especially during December, right. January, February, March, April, that you may sign up as a couple somebody else is going to sign up as a couple and they'll put you together. Mm -hmm. You may have a threesome and one lone person is going to want to play golf. They may plug them in with you. That's the beauty of trying it later. You'll have less competition because people don't want to play if they don't think they can finish their nine holes. Robert writes in with a question. He wants to know, do you know if maybe there's a length that a camper van can't be longer than, say, 21 feet? Robert wants to park that in his driveway. <laughs> Robert, no offense, but your neighbors don't want to see your 21-foot camper van parked in your driveway. No. <laughs> um, that sounds a little bit snooty, but the homes here are so well kept that most people don't want something like that, you know, kind of spoiling the look of the neighborhood. Now, you may have a very, very nice one. Man, we took a drive yes. a couple of days ago. We had some guests in from out of town. We went through uh, the conservation trail and the neighborhoods back there. And there are lots of homes that have RV garages, garages. great yeah, big oh warehouse type garages in their home. And we saw three, at least three big RVs parked outside. That's for a short period of time while they get them ready to go on a trip. Mm -hmm. Some people have smaller vans. But still, uh, I, I did call and ask on this for you. And no RVs can be parked outside. No boats can be parked outside. So if it's, I'd get one just big enough to fit inside your garage if you have to have one. Just our opinion. Mm -hmm. Pablo Davila asks the same question basically. Watching the videos, I don't see anybody leaving their cars or boats in the driveway. Isn't that allowed? Well, you heard it, Pablo. No. 
Pablo also asks, is it permissible to have mango and avocado trees in your yard? I think so. I think that's what we saw on our drive the other day, uh, an avocado tree. I bet that was what that was. I don't know. Yeah, yeah I think there's it. a video coming out Thursday where I drive by and there's a, a, it looks like a palm tree, but it has things that look like coconuts about this long and shaped like a football, green. I don't know what those are. No, it Let us know if you, avocado. I don't know if you know what, yeah, too big for avocado. Yeah. But um, you know that people have lemon trees yes. and orange trees <laughs> and lime trees and uh, there are no rules against it, I guess. I know that in some neighborhoods, you must keep them picked up because they attract rodents and maybe insects when they fall on the ground. But here you can have them. But I guess they are kind of a hard uh, plant to take care of. Many people put them in containers mm -hmm. and have them on their patios or decks. Mm -hmm. But yeah, Pablo, you can have it. Maria writes, are people outside the villages, like for instance, Lady Lake, allowed to participate in clubs and activities in the villages? And that's a no. They cannot go into any activities or any clubs. That's for residents only. We have heard, and again, official information, hard to get. If you live in a surrounding area, you cannot get a guest pass. So you're not going to be allowed to participate. The village's residents pay for these things through their amenity fees, mm -hmm. through their bond, etc. So, no. Sorry. Nightwines writes, I'm guessing, and it's pure speculation on my part, that COVID has had a huge impact on the villages. I'm attempting to get a gauge on the differences in the amount of snowbirds this year as compared to past years. Nightwines, um, I think this year there are fewer, as we said earlier in the show, because, for example, Canada, Great Britain, those folks can't get back. Mm -hmm. So we think it's more. By the same token, though, people that are here, some people aren't leaving to go back to their places. Mm -hmm. So maybe it evens out. Uh, it's, it's still fine. You know, the crowds for us have been fine. But we don't go to some of the things we would have gone to pre-COVID. So we don't know. Her, for example, on yoga. Yes, I haven't been for She's not going. almost a year. So she can't come in on the lines on yoga. Uh, water aerobics seems to be okay, though, didn't it? I think it's back open to it's most of the uh, villagers. Doing all right. So it, it's everything is going as it should be. Mm -hmm. Just we're all anxious for this COVID to be over. That's going to do it for this edition of... Bag Thanks to everybody that wrote questions. And remember, you guys can send them in, and I will answer the ones that uh, that I can get to. So please be patient with us. Um, again, our email address is villagesnewcomers at gmail.com. And remember to like and subscribe for us. We really do appreciate it. Yeah, we hit 27,000 this know, week. I cannot believe that. That's great. Yeah, guys, recommend us to your friends and uh, help us keep this channel growing. Until next time. See you when you get here.